They say you don't become a witch. That it's just one day you wake up and realize that's what you've always been. The one that doesn't always fit in. The one that likes the woods, the sun and sky, cats, owls, and the moon. The one who stays up late reading books, playing role-playing games, and learning the names of the stars. The one that likes to wear black eyeliner, capes, and then you realize, oh, that's what I am. I'm a witch. I'm a witch. <laughs> I'm a witch too. <laughs> I'm a witch. People um, ask me if I'm a good witch or a bad witch, and I say, well, I, it just depends on what side of the fence you're standing. I was, I was taught there is no good or bad witches. We're just witches, and we just do the balance. And sometimes we're just we go a little dark, and sometimes we go a little light, and we just keep going. So yeah. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Alana. Yay. Yay! You pictured Mrs. Doubtfire there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to talk about the correspondence card on the Seekers Path deck. Now, this um, this is a free class discussion about the different things in witchcraft. Our beautiful and amazing Lady Lola, who's the high priestess of Keepers of the cross, children of the crossroads. Children of the crossroads. Why? Why is my? I don't know. Okay, children of the crossroads coven. Yes. Um, in Spokane, Washington. Did I say Spokane, right? Or is it Spokane? It's Spokane, but you know, I I would let you say it wrong a couple times before I correct you. <laughs> you gotta always correct me because I'll just it'll get in my head wrong and then I'll never get it right. Um, <laughs> She created this beautiful deck that goes over with the, the help of an artist. What's the artist's name? Uh, artist's name is Ari Bratsis, and she is a local Spokane witch and artist here in Spokane, Washington. So there's 52 cards in this amazing deck. And so we are covering a different card every uh, class, every week, Monday at 5, so that you can learn about the different aspects of Wicca. And today we're talking about correspondences. Yes. Yes. Isn't this interesting? Her her take on correspondences. She has a very different take, the artist, on some of the topics, and I appreciate that she brings that to the table. So, well, there are some correspondences here. Let's see. We have a puppet. Yes. And some scissors, some thread, pins. Needle. This is like. This is like. Some of that magic that people think that we're not supposed to do, uh, the poppet magic, you know, the voodoo dolls, but it it really represents what we do as which is with all the correspondences that we use. We use thing we use things to represent other things in our magic. So, so what she's saying here is that the puppet corresponds to the girl in the picture. And yeah. that that is sympathetic magic yeah. is that you do something, you say, okay, this cup is actually filled with water, but I'm filling it with, with water that is going to make me skinny and healthy and sexier. And then when I drink that, that's what the water does. Cause I've programmed mm -hmm. it that, and that's, that's similar. So she's using it in the a term that I've not heard it used before. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Like yeah. It. Um, well, so, but aren't also, so here's the thing is like, because I've had conversations many, many years about correspondences and I always feel that correspondences are, um, like if you want to get money, if you want to do a money spell, you put a dollar bill on your altar or a green candle, or if you want, you know, or mint, you know, that, 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 that that's what we're talking about. Right. Cause I want to make sure that I've got the right mindset what we're talking about well see isn't this lovely because you guys this is what language does okay yeah. so i know thought forms to be a 
form that you have created a spell with that's called a thought form. And I, one of my theosophical friends uses that word completely different. And I had to change my thinking about it. And I think that here correspondences might be a little bit different than what I'm used to in my language. To me, correspondences are red, south, fire. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. And, and like, so like your green candle or your, your, your green is earth, your yellow is air. Um, so then what other correspond, but there's other ones too, because the, the other cards I've seen regarding this topic in another uh, discussion, uh, group discussion that was had years ago, they, they put all the different correspondences, like they put herbs and they put the sun and they put, um, you know, uh, rocks and they are crystals and they put, you know, to represent all the different things that we work with. So I guess thought form and correspondences could go hand in hand because it is representing and corresponding with something that we are trying to make manifest. Well, you need to know your correspondences in order to pick out the right herb and the right crystal and the right colored thread, the yeah. right, yeah. You, yeah. that's correspondences teach you basically that if I don't have this, if I don't, if I can't put the sun in this, then if I put a sunflower in it, then it has the same essence. And yes. then I can, I can connect energetically with it through the correspondence. You like, if you want to do something with, you know, if you don't live near water, and you, or you don't, you can't get out to water. You can always put a bowl of water to represent a lake that you are blessing, or you know, whatever, or or some sort of weather magic, or so, or wh whatever you want to use. So I think we're on the same same we're on the same wavelength. We just use different words. Actually, words. I think it's really beautiful because when you when when language evolves like it does, right? As as we all grow with Wicca the different perspectives that people have deepen the understanding, which is what my correspondence will, the will of wise is all about. It yes. deepens the understanding of each individual box. When you use the correspondences, when you know that it also means this, and it also means this, and it also means this, then you can drill down to a common meaning. Yeah. And, yeah and understand it for this is a this is the wheel of wise for those who have never seen it before it has a bunch of course it is that was your uh wasn't that your one of your senior or your or not senior your like a class project that you did was oh let me tell you no there's a story that goes with this okay okay so my teacher paul de martin he was from england and he brought over his stuff from england and he had this amazing spell board and it just went out to the runes. So okay. there's astrology planets and there's tarot cards and chakras and runes. There's all these things that are on this wheel. And his went out to the runes and it did some pretty amazing things magically. Like I could stare at it and I would see things and it would teach me things. And we did amazing magic with that spell board. So when I let, when, we, he was he was an immigrant here illegally, and so when we lost contact with each other, because this was before cell phones, I yeah. wanted to recreate it. And so me okay. and a bunch of students sat around one night after I was a high priestess of Covenant of Wise in Atlanta. And Friday night, every Friday night, we would get together and we would figure out what was going to go on the wheel. And we got all these different kinds of, like we, it was the Yijing, we were going to put the seasons on here, but we took off everything that just absolutely repeated itself mm -hmm. and looked for things that had unique individual expressions. And this is what came out. And, um, and it's, uh, this is what we do the Wiccan seminary course. Yeah. On, because what I learned is is that you have to teach all the students in the, around the wheel of the year. You have to teach them things that correspond yep. with the time of year that we're in so yeah. that all of their energies can stay jabbing like this. Because yeah. if you don't do that, then they go boom. And students yeah. that go boom are unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> We want to avoid that. I don't like scraping it off the ceiling. I don't either. It's not, a, it's, 
I don't have a good cleaning uh, uh, agent for that. <laughs> that, uh, that is morbid. We're getting ruins morbid. the okay. wood. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Yes, it, it has been really helpful in my studies too. I used to have a big one that was made on vellum, and um, and I drew as the the one I created it uh, with, and I drew all kinds of stuff on it. And man, I would just sit over that thing and you know take in the mysteries and write things out. And yeah, well, I love and it. it's it's it connect. It's so thoughtfully. Uh, fluid like it, it just when when you look at it in sections sometimes it, it teaches us to look at the whole picture too because for me when i was a student at the seminary i would look at it in sections and go i don't ah, um and then you started teaching us the flow of it and then we started getting into the whole oh it, it flows in and it it tells a story and you even have the tarot cards of the fool's journey and how that happens it's, it's very it's a wonderful tool. I highly suggest people to go to the seminary and, and find out more about that wheel of the year or that, that wise wheel. Well, it's, it's kind of confusing too, but if you start in the middle and you just to think, work on the things, you know, just work with the things, you know, right. Cause people mm -hmm. try to see the whole thing and it gets overwhelming, but it, you, you move out as you progress. Yep. Yeah. You know, but correspondence is sometimes you need to know, where this room goes on the wheel of the year so that you can really grok it is yeah when, when you're studying runes sometimes it's a sometimes it's like a uh, i don't know i don't know it's it's difficult to study runes because See, i find it i don't find it difficult to study runes because um i think runes are very straightforward tarot it can go so many different ways runes are just like this is what it means. This is what you do. Boom. Like that's kind of how I, I view runes. Very straightforward. Um, they have these, you, you probably start have like some kind of a sheet where somebody just put down the, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, um, I find they have some more depth than that. And yeah. when you study the poetry and, and the edits, yeah. and yeah. sometimes it can be misleading because we don't understand the culture. Yeah. But if you know where it goes on the runic fortnight and you can compare it with other things, you can decipher the edits. You can yeah. figure out because see, you can always have somebody say, this is what it means. This yeah. means inheritance. This means birthing. This means creativity. But if you, um, if you study the background and the history and then you, you, you know it, you grok it, you own it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the other thing, perfect. the other thing about runes is that they're, they're, they're binary. They're like a straight up and down line and then they're a curved line. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. they're male, female, and they're put together in all these different ways. Yeah. And that means something too. And I think that's really cool, but it makes it easier to understand if you know your correspondences because you can figure out, other meanings that might not be apparent in the couple of word interpretation. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's easy to, yeah, it, it's, it's easy to do a quick, but a room. And that's room. very beneficial. Super yeah. beneficial to have oh, yeah. that knowledge. That's right? what gets you, that's what gets you exposed to going mm -hmm. deeper. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I'll do the same thing with numbers, you know, one is beginnings, two is balance, three is truth, but it's obviously deeper than that. If you're a numerologist. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So, it's nice to have a nice, a nice, uh, cliff notes start. And then you, you can, need, dive you need a cornerstone, a touchstone, right? Yep. That's why it's yeah. start in the middle, start with earth, air, fire, and water and yep. move out from there because like earth, earth is things that you can touch, right? Yeah. And then fire are things that you do. It's like a verb. Earth's yeah. like a noun. Fire's like a verb. Water's yeah. your feelings. Air is your thoughts. Yeah. And then all of these correspondences help you understand why those things are those things. And it tells a story that deepens your understanding of the original thing. Yeah. Well, you were talking about sympathetic magic, and I was looking at some of my notes from past discussions and sympathetic magic is listed there um there's also some other things that i want to bring up and see what what your take is on it uh 
there's a note on here from, like I said, past discussions that says, as above, so below with correspondences. Okay, so, well, that's where we get into the where are the quarters. And people okay. often argue about where are the quarters. I've had people in Georgia say, well, our water is to the east, and so we worship water in the east. Well, that's mm. going to make it tough if you try to study anything Egyptian. <laughs> A lot of the mysteries say they're going into the west, which means they're dying, right? And you, if you look to the stars as above, so below, then it's easier to know because 5,000 year of an unbroken tradition is probably more accurate than modern day new age spiritual market which yeah yeah know. i and i take that as as above so below as as um again in in the sense of correspondence is how i kind of look at it is what is happening here is also happening um on that other realm and it they work in concert together and so whenever you do i have you ever seen that movie um i think it's called them or uh, I, it's one of those Jordan Peele movies that he did, um, Get Out. But it was the one about the where everyone had an avatar. On yeah. the, yes, right. And so I was, me and my husband were watching that, and I was going, "That's like a little like as above, so below, like literally and figuratively, because what the avatars are doing up on the earth, below wherever that that place was, they're." They're the things that ran them were doing the same thing and you don't know which came first and but that you're not supposed to like who's controlling who so i got really deep into it and wow. i thought that's as above so below magic. yes it is yeah it is yeah. well and that's the whole thing of magic right okay yeah. so as above so below I, I love talking magic with you lola because you have such a different perspective from me, but we both agree. Yeah, so yeah. we say the same things in different ways and it's yeah. really cool. So I like E equals MC squared, right? So energy equals matter times the speed of light, mm -hmm. right? Squared mm -hmm. times the speed of light squared. So if you, um, if you speed up matter to the speed of light square, it turns into energy. It disappears. It turns yeah. into energy. That means that energy slowed down turns into matter. And that sympathetic magic. We project what we want into the future all the time, all the time, all the time. Yeah. Yes. And, it, and it manifests for us. The yeah. trick is recognizing and being ever vigilant about your thoughts and controlling what you project into the future because you're going to get what you're focused on. If yep. you focused on negativity, if you focused on positivity, you're going to get it. It doesn't matter. Your brain, your subconscious, it's just going to manifest for you because that is the rules of the universe. Absolutely. Yeah. It's as oh. above, so below. It, your, your future corresponds to what you're thinking. Thoughts are things. Everything we put in the, what we put into things is what we get out of it. So it's, it's just how oh, that works. Yeah. Well, no, you, it, it, oh, go ahead, hon. It's the same. It's the same reality for everybody. What you project into the future is the energy, what you think is the energy. And then it attaches to feelings. Then it attaches to actions. Then it becomes matter. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I like also the, do you feel that correspondences are also about um, what to use? Like we were talking earlier, like our focus on our spells, because we can just, if you look at all the stuff that us witches have, all the tools and all the crystals and all the herbs and all the things we put into our spell, that is like a... Um, that's just the focus on. That's just to have the magic focus. Yeah, everything we have. I mean, I'm looking around my house. I, it just everywhere is something magical that I can put and focus on and say, I want this to happen and this is my intent. This is what I focus on. But really, the, the magic is in the witch, not in the tools. The magic is in the witch, not the cards. The magic is in the witch. Yes, they are charmed things. Yes, we do get magic vibrations from our crystals and from our all that stuff. But really, we could do this magic with with just our finger. 
Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah the, yeah. the tools are there to help you and teach you and augment you like, okay, so pick up this angel light. The cool thing about angel light is it always has the same energy because it's a rock, but I yep. am a bag of water mostly. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. when I hold the angel light, the vibration of the angel light changes my vibration. Right. But yeah. I can also just think, okay, I need the energy of angel light right now. Or mm -hmm. I can just think, okay, I need to be vigilant and peaceful and calm. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's all about how you want to do it. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we have trouble being peaceful, vigilant and calm. And so we go, oh my God, this is going to help me. And then yeah. we can get there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's no, it's not necessary. It's, it's just, it's, 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 but it, it helps. It helps focus on it. And it helps us because um, we it's and also it's just really pretty things to look at, you know, charms and and little, you know, poppets and little things and magical things. And you can bless them. And it's, I mean, it's like a, it's like going into an antique store. That's and, and all you know, you can find magical things in antique stores. Oh, I my goodness. Them. Yes, I know. And here we are as which is going in an antique store and I see a bell. And then I can have a muggle go in and just say oh that's a pretty bell that makes a pretty sound i love the sound of bells and i'm thinking all the magical stuff with the bell using it um in in coven work you uh what it's what it corresponds with it corresponds with air um you know and so we're looking at the same thing and we're getting a joy from it but it's it's completely different it's and completely i different. love yeah i love that i love when i well, yeah pictures. I'm going into, so I go into Goodwill. It's funny you mentioned bells because I went into Goodwill and I started ringing bells for this. <laughs> which one's going to call, the, which one's yep. got the right magic for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I like a little ding, ding, like one of those little chimes on a wooden block. Bing. Yeah. That's what I have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just keeps ringing and you can control how many times you hit it. But yeah, so exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because when you ring the bell, it means come, come, come. Yeah. You're calling the elemental. And if it doesn't ring right, it's not going to pierce the veil, cross over, call those entities to your circle. You don't want to mess around with that communication. You want it to be solid. Yep. And, right. that's where you, and that's where your intent and knowing your correspondences and knowing what that symbolizes. So would you say correspondences is the same uh, type of language or same word as like symbolize or symbols? Yeah. Well, yeah. To, to some degree, I would say that they're, they're very symbolic of each other. They correspond. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, it's like cheesy witch humor today. I love it. I couldn't, I mean, that one was low hanging fruit. I'm sorry. It was, just, it was in between me and the camera. I had to get it out of the way. <laughs> I, um, I set that one up for you. Come on. You did. You, did. But, you know, if you, it, to say South is symbolic of the element of fire. When you face South, you're facing the element of fire. Well, there's no fire there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. So yes. And, yeah. and I love symbolism because it does the same thing. It's the language of goddess or the language mm -hmm. of God or the language of spirit. You know, it's yes. genderless and spirit speaks in symbols. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I wanted to bring that up because when we talk to our deities and when we invoke our deities, um, we use, I, I believe we use correspondences to connect with them. So like, obviously, you know, if you're going to, if you want to, you know, you could have a simple ritual to honor Athena, let's say you could have put, have a, you know, if someone's like, oh, I just got this small little table in my apartment and I, and I want to work with Athena, but I don't have any pictures of her or any stuff. It's like, get a pile of books, put some books in the middle of the, of the table right maybe if you got an owl necklace put that there a you know you candle. Want, uh, yeah yes yes and and to me that's what gets me so excited is that you could do Skills. magic with anything you could yeah. do and and it's not it doesn't have to be the most grandiose looking like you know 
thing that's going to make, you know, oh, I need this big library, which if you're lucky and you have a library like the tab does, yeah, cool. Like go in the library and call in Athena. But some of us don't have that. So get a couple books and, you know, get, get in that energy, light the blue candle, put the little owl there, get, you know, whatever scales or whatever. And there you are. And it's, and, and the deity will recognize you because they're speak, you're speaking their language. You're using the symbols or the correspondences that they, that are going to draw them and they recognize. And I, and that, that's why I love what we do because we carry it with us anywhere we go. Anywhere we go, we carry that with us. You know, speaking of carrying it with us everywhere we go, we have GodCon coming up. Are you coming? Of course I'm coming. Oh, my oh. God. I cannot wait to see you. Do you know we have 54 people coming to GodCon to camp out at the Mother Church? I am excited. 54. Awesome. We're going to have so much fun. But if you don't know your correspondences, it's really difficult to dress up like a deity, isn't it? Right? Yeah. 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 It's, it's a... I think that people sometimes they look at the tarot decks and they go, Oh my God, I don't want to memorize 78 cards. They look at correspondences and they're like, I don't want to memorize all these things. I had to memorize dates in history. I don't want to do all of that stuff. Right. But correspondences and tarot decks are to me, a tarot deck or an Oracle, an Oracle deck like this is like it. But a tarot deck is the sacred text of Wicca, like the yeah. Christian Bible. A tarot yeah. deck is the sacred text of Wicca. And of course, an oracle deck such as this one that we're going through right now is also very sacred and yeah. unwraps the mysteries of the universe for you, right? Same yeah. thing when you learn your correspondences, you can put things together. Deity can send you messages and you can actually, I mean, deity's going to send you messages. The question oh, yeah. is, is whether or not you're going to be able to figure out what they're saying to you. Well, yeah, like, are you going to be able to see, like, if a if a um, a bumblebee keeps bothering you, you know, like, you're like, God dang it, this bee keeps, and you know, well, maybe Demeter's trying to reach out to you. And, but some people don't know that. That's why it's good to know your correspondences so you can see those messages, messages from deity clearly. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we had a little girl get stung with a bee up by the bee boxes. First one that's been stung. And it's, it's her first bee sting and she just loved the bees and she got stung right here. And we were oh. like, that, that is your initiation into the Melissa's honey. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's initiation, right? That, right? that bee lost its life. It didn't want to die. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so what do, what do things mean? That's really what correspondence is. What does this mean? What does and it how mean? How is this? How is this revealing the mysteries of the universe? Have you ever seen, I, I, have you ever seen, because I like to, have you ever seen the movie, uh, by, no, it's, it's kind of a funny movie, but it was actually pretty good, uh, Dogma by Kevin Smith. Yes, and, uh, yeah. and, and remember God, <laughs> And remember God was, was Alanis Morissette. And yes. it wasn't when she opened her mouth, it was the most piercing sound, like, because you could not understand what yes. God was saying. And that always gave me chills because that was even before I knew I was a witch, but I knew that I started questioning, how am I understanding deity talking to me? How am I getting the messages? And it actually made me look into correspondences for different deities. And because I was like, yes, how would we understand if, if a God or a goddess came here and opened their mouth, I, I just have a feeling it would be blah, 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 or whatever. It would just be, static or it would be and that and and they want us to hear them they want us and it's frustrating it's like those language barriers when you meet someone that doesn't speak your language and you're trying to communicate so you might get a pen out and start writing you know or 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 acting out things we've done that before um you know like uh the telephone call you know um that's what i feel like when we're we're talking with deity is like we really want to talk to each other and we're gonna make it happen or else they wouldn't be sending a symbol or sending a correspondence down to us. So it, it's, it, it makes me excited that we have that open communication with our, with our higher power and, and all that. Yeah. I find that the, you know, sometimes it sounds like my own voice and people think that it's your subconscious talking to you. Yes. Um, 
But I think that that is the voice of, you know, at least your version of deity, your higher self, the your spirit guides, the yeah, necessary that's guiding you through this life. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Kayla just said baby spiders have been crawling all over her mm -hmm. lately. Yep. Yep. What do you think that means, Kayla? Who do you think's trying to get a hold of you? <laughs> that's grandma <laughs> knocking on your door. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kayla. Welcome to this life of Hecate. <laughs> welcome to Hecate's realm. Yeah, Hecate's the matron goddess of the ATC. So you, you've you just come across us, um, you know, in the past year. So yeah. I would not be surprised that Hecate is like, hello. And yeah. also, we're at the we're at the summer solstice. So you're going to see more and more spiders as we get to Samhain. This is when. Yep. They come out. Yeah, we're getting. They we're, start. This is when they start to come. Yeah, out. yeah, yes, they do, and they they do like to. Uh, Hikate loves sending her spiders, and she's been sending her spiders to me ever since I was a little girl. I used to get bit by spiders in my parents' house all the time, and nobody else in my family got bit by them. And I thought everyone got bit by the spiders. I thought everyone, and I was waking up with spider bites, and my mom's going what the heck? And I'm like, well, yeah, we have spiders. Aren't they biting you too, mom? And she's like, no. And my dad's in the basement, like trying to get rid of the spiders and, and, but nobody else got the bites, but me. And I found out later that, oh my gosh, that is, Hecate's been marking me for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> she's been oh my, oh my goodness. Did you have a spider nest in your bed? Like what's going on? That's what, that's what my mom was and no, I did not because my mom's a clean freak. I mean, our house was clean, like, and I was waking up with all these little spider bites all over. And I had dreams about spiders, which again, if you know anything about Hecate, she, she likes the dream world. She likes to come to you while you're sleeping. Um, and um, so me dreaming spiders when I was a little girl and getting bit by spiders. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but I think Hecate marked me oh absolutely <laughs> oh absolutely 100 yes. percent. Yeah. yes um i invoked spider one year when we were having the the totems and yeah. that was incredibly hecate oh, and yeah. how she weaves the stories and yeah. she weaves the stories into the of the heroes into the stars and they got our way and she, she is in your house writing your story into the book of life. So you should not kill her when you find mm -hmm. her in your home and no. all of these kinds of incredible things. And, um, and, you know, I didn't necessarily know that Spider and Hecate were connected until I started working with one or the other. And then, you know, they, it came out with, oh yeah. With, when I first got here, Pete had all of these things plugged into the walls and they would click, click, oh. click. And yeah. I'm like, what in the heck have you got going on in here? And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, it's going click, click. And he's like, I can't hear anything. And so I go over to it and I pull it out of the wall and I go, oh, I stopped it. What the heck is this? And he said, you can't hear that. Humans can't hear that. And I went, oh, I can tell you my Navy story next, but yes, I can hear it. Oh, wow. Yes, I can hear it. And so he was like, that's to get rid of spiders. And I'm like, you would, you, I got rid of all of them. I said, this is grandmother's house. All spiders can live here. And I got yeah. rid of all of them. Oh Why my would God. you run spiders out of grandmother's house? No, no, no. way. We, yeah, had but, a, we had a spider in the, in our corner above the, the, the front door and um, both my boys are deathly afraid of spiders and me and my husband are not. And so that spider made a web in the corner of our door. And every time we'd come in or go out, we'd, we'd say hi and bye to it. And um, we never told our oldest son that it was there or else he would never go through that door. We, we just hid it from him until this, it, the spider disappeared because the cycle of life and all that. And it was, you know, but then we told him, he was like, yeah, there was, we had our little spider. We named her and everything. And he's like, oh my gosh, mom. <laughs> yeah. If somebody responds really negatively to spiders, if I see one around them, that's not got any chance of hurting them. I yep. said any chance, Brenna, if you're watching. Um, 
<laughs> I won't tell them that it's there because they'll just scream and scare the poor little spider. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love correspondences though because that there's so much that when you look at all of the things about spider, how it tells you about Hecate, and when you look at lions, it tells you about Demeter, and yeah. when you look at horses. At horses and lions, they carry the same energy. Why? So weird. But there's depth in that. When you yeah. understand it, there's depth in that. So when you're reading mythology and you're studying about gods and you hear these weird things like this guy ate his children and then he threw them up whole. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like they, he threw them up as adults and they yeah. had grown up. Into, now, see, that ain't really happened to a man, right? No. Like this man didn't swallow his children whole and then at some time later after after they had grown up they all come out of him no, no. that's symbolism yeah. and if you know what your correspondences are you can relate what they're saying to the other things that they actually mean and you can understand what the story's all about because the mysteries are hidden right out in the open yes they are it i love i love that uh that they're right in front of us and they're waiting. I I feel like they're waiting to be unlocked with all of the symbolism and correspondences that are being thrown at us. It's up to us though, to take that step and, and decipher. Yeah, it yeah. is. Well, so if you don't look for it, it just looks like fun. It just looks like extra glitz yeah. and glamor. Okay. So like y'all, there's so much magic in in some companies. And when I did Mary Kate, the thing that kept me in it was the magic, right? My yeah. director gave me this pink Cadillac button. And she said, yeah. you're going to have a pink Cadillac one day. And I sure enough, I got a pink Cadillac. It really yep. didn't make me happy as far as, you know, I didn't want to live my life that way. But that magic was here. I'm going to put this in your mind. I'm going to help you make this goal. You can focus on this to make your goal. And then I manifested a Cadillac, right? Yeah. If you put your mind on something and it means something to you, I'm looking to see if there's anything else on my desk that has that. Oh, okay. So these two flowers right here, these two flowers, you're talking about Athena and altars yeah. to Athena. This is my altar to Persephone. And this mm -hmm. is my altar to Demeter because I wore this in my hair when I was Demeter. And yes. this I got for a different reason. And I put them right here next to my picture of Pete and I keep them clipped up. And so when I think of them, they correspond to those two deities. When I look at those, that makes me think of them. Yeah. And yeah. I worship, right? Like, oh, yeah. I love you guys. I love you, mother. Yeah. I love you, daughter. Right? Yeah, yeah. That That's correspondences. So yeah, that it's it's so lovely to have that at our at our fingertips and in our world. If you just go outside, it doesn't matter if you live in a beautiful forest area or if you live in an urban area, they're everywhere, the correspondences. And they just they you know, but I love when you can tell there's a bunch of witches out somewhere in public because like I like when our coven goes out on a group outing or something and we will be looking at um, a flower petal. And like, oh, oh, and people probably see these crazy women looking at a beautiful flower petal that fell on the, somehow is on the cash registers, uh, you know, we're shopping or at the coffee thing. And there's a beautiful, just a petal that fell. Maybe it fell out of someone's hair. Maybe someone left it there. I don't know. But we'll be like, oh, what does this mean? Blah, blah, blah. And the people behind the counter are going, these women are crazy. And it's like, no, we, we, we're magical. This, this, this means something. <laughs> We ended up, we did that in the Biltmore State. Me and Dusty were going through the Biltmore State and I'm showing him, I'm like, this guy was a magician and it's all in his house. Wait till you see it. And so we get there and I'm like, you see this sunken 18 foot circle in the middle of the living room at, that's got a glass ceiling that's open to the sky and below it's the Halloween room and there's all these breasts. In. And so we're in the museum area and we're looking at these books, right? And it says, let art. 19, uh, 1793. I'm about okay. to say. Shoo, excuse Bless me. You. Shoo. Okay. Ask you again. So it said it's 11 by 17 bound book 
that's leather, right? And it says uh-huh. Le Art 1793. Le, then, then there's another one beside it. It says Le Art. 1794 and then another and there's all these rows of books a new book for every year and we're looking at it and we're uh, we're like man there's not paint there's not pictures of paintings in those books those are book shadows right and about that time the museum curator leans over and says what y'all talking about (laughs) (laughs) and we told her and she said well look at this tapestry up here what does it mean? It's not original with the house and we haven't been able to figure it out yet. And so we're looking at it and we're like, well, it could be this and it could be this. Look, like she's wearing a crown. Could yeah. be that. What do we, you know, and then the lady's like, but what about the robber? And we, we look in the corner and there's this little heiress pushing out a golden apple. And we're oh. like, ah, oh, it's the trial of Paris. Yes. Right? And so, so she, she took down our name and information. She's like, we might call you later. But it's because we do our correspondence. Is yes. that we had an awesome experience at the Biltmore House. You know, one of the things that I do is um, I teach on color therapy. And we connect all of these things in your brain when you go through the freshman and then you mm-hmm. go through the sophomore and you go through the junior. You're going around the wheel of the year and we're connecting all of these dots for you in your head. So as you grow, your, your mind just opens like a, you know, like a Lotus, right? Lotus. Yeah. Another another correspondence. (laughs) There was this thing that the, (laughs) there it goes. (laughs) We're just doing an interpretive dance right now is what we're doing. I don't know. (laughs) Well, you gotta be entertaining. So, um, yeah, but that 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 connections that you make lead you to extrapolations of greater and greater awarenesses of the world around you because this guy has this mansion and it's stuffed full of magical items and most people walk through going, "Ooh, that's weird. Ooh, that's weird. This guy was kind of crazy, right? Like what?" And I'm walking through going, "Wow, that's the triple goddess. Those yep. are the three graces." That's Baphomet. This is a Masonic temple right here. All of yep. the walls are like this to keep the hates out of the corners. You know, it's different experience. Yeah. I love that. I, I had a wonderful little correspondence that happened to me yesterday. So yesterday was a tough day. It was Father's Day. And as you people know, my father just recently passed away. And I was sitting out on the backyard. And uh, we have a, some music I could play out there. And so I played my dad's favorite Willie Nelson album. And I sat and I listened to it. And as soon as his favorite song, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, came on, this beautiful butterfly came and landed on me. And I knew that my dad heard me. Because butterflies don't just come. People say, well, it's, the butterflies are out. No, I, I, no there's, there, are no, there are no small coincidences. That was, that was my dad. Because the butterfly is a messenger. Right. The butterfly is yeah, they symbol us joy. Yeah. Joy, happiness. Yeah. Yes. And and because I was feeling sad. And my dad was telling me, Don't be sad. Love your music. Love this music. You love music. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. You know, and, and then I, I felt a little better. I was like, okay, dad, you know. So just stuff like that that we can look at. I, I feel like some people can be so cynical and be like, it's just a butterfly. And it's like, I would hate to live in your brain. <laughs> no doubt, right? No doubt. Oh, Lord. Well, you know, that's one of the things, too, is that, um, you know, you can enjoy life and you can have fun and you can see the magic and the beauty and the wonder in it. Do you oh, see what Caleb yeah, put? Caleb. Or, you yeah. can, or you can be closed off and boring and you can decide that it's all bull. And do you know what? For you, it will be. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. And, and because because you can suspend your disbelief and find magic. Or you can hold on to your old way of being and stay and, the same forever. And if yeah. that's what makes you happy, then by all means, do it. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. Some people... Some people are, are enjoy misery. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm, just, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be optimistic about cynics. I think, I think pe- pe- people sometimes fear what they don't understand. And yeah. we have been taught to live a life of shallow ignorance where we listen to what other people tell us. And yeah. we take that for granted. 
rather than risking delving into the darkness and finding out on our own, you know, yeah. and that's, that's what makes witches, witches, witches yeah. delve into the darkness and find out on our own. And we're scared. We're just willing to do it anyway, because we've exactly. got to know and the need oh. to know is more important than anything else. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I feel that I really, this conversation went to wonderful places because it started out with, with the, the card there, which is the, the poppet. And, and it just went into these beautiful talks about our magic being everywhere. And, and that is, that is so awesome that we can go from just a picture from a card that we're like, that's an interesting take on correspondences and look at the beautiful conversation that it just invoked in us. I love it. it. Really I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it, magic is always growing. It's always growing. Yeah. And, uh, and being able to compare language and be like, well, this is what it means to me. Well, this is what it means to me. But and both being right, it opens yeah. up a world of greater possibilities. And that's what magic is all about, right? Yep. Yep. So if, what if you got this card, Bella, today? You know, you were like, I need an oracle card. And someone flipped this card, the correspondence card. What do you think it would mean for you right now? Well, I would have to heavily focus on the word. Otherwise, I would probably do a cleansing spell and, <laughs> and, and shield me and make sure. I would think that somebody was casting against me if I pulled this card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Now, for me, it means that. Uh, it shows uh, uh, what we do affects others. So that's kind of what it it was it's saying to me. If I got this card, it means like be careful with the actions I take and be and because it's going to affect others, which is very very symbolic of what's going on with me right now and with things. I I I've, I've been very hypersensitive. Um, feeling vulnerable. So sometimes things come out, I take things wrong or I say things and, and it's not an excuse. It's just, you know, grieving no, it's is, grief. is, it's grief, grief, is yeah, it's grief. Me, ah, you know? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm focusing more on, on like watching what I say, watching the actions I do, because I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And I know people know, people know that, oh, Lola's grieving and they give me that, that space. But at the same time, it makes me feel like I don't want to hurt your feelings or I don't want to make you feel like what the heck just happened. And so I'm, I'm working on that. And that's what that is telling me is like, just be aware and, and be honest about it. Say, Hey, you know what, this probably affected you this way. And this is what I meant. And I love you and blah, blah, blah. So that's what that means to me. Someone said, um, Kayla says at first screamed karma. But now the card shows balance to me. The poppet could be used to harm or help uh, to heal hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ideally, we would use poppets to heal. Yeah. Um, most of us just send energy now. I don't really know very many people that use poppets unless they're. You can do distance healing. I think is what most people do with your with your chakra. You know, I I have a friend that makes chakra poppets and has all the the chakra stones onto a beautiful little poppet. So when she does long distance chakra work, she has that focus, that correspondence or that symbolism, so she can do the the <laughs> relay healing. Oh, Where what is this that? card? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was seeing what uh, uh, Alana Hamilton said: scissors in the back, blue handle intentional to me yeah ah yeah this card would tell me what lola is saying you affect the world around you with every action and word from brenna yep. grace yep yeah so i um i really love poppet work but i haven't done it in so long it's yeah. the kind of thing that takes a lot of time and energy and any kind of craft that you do though, you guys, when you sit there and you're sewing and you're thinking about, you know, you're making this for, for that person, or if you're making a blanket, that's a healing blanket, that's going to heal somebody, or if you're doing a cross stitch or you're cooking food or you're doing any kind of artistic endeavor, 
what you're mm -hmm. thinking about, you're putting into that and you create magic that way. And that yeah. is, that is a correspondence that we're talking about. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else anyone wants to ask or say, or, or add to the conversation? I, what do you, are you, what do you think, Bella? We, we good. We, she said, she said, she said, she said she made a pop at the Hester for Spring Mysteries. And oh, I, nice. it, made me, it made me think of this weird nun doll that we have. We have this weird doll. <laughs> it's a nun. And I think it ended up in, like, it's been in Persephone stuff. It's been in Demeter stuff. Now it's in my living room. I don't think anybody wants it because it's got this weird energy on it. And it mm -hmm. might, we don't have any, any knowledge of the history. But... Yeah. We none of us really like nuns. <laughs> so we, we, we're like this should be Hestia's because Hestia wears a veil and nuns wear veils. Yeah, you know. So I like that's the course. I think those scary movies with the nuns has made because whenever I see a group of nuns, I don't. Is is it weird that? I got the same fear too. When I see a group of nuns, I feel, and they're just the nicest, most delightful ladies. But when I see a group of nuns together, I, I instantly think, Oh, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. It's the same as I'm sure they see a bunch of witches. They're like, Ooh. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's weird to somebody. I know, I know. We're the, we we in, we invoke the same reaction when we're all together in public. I know that. So we do, Ooh. but we're the normal people. I right? Yes. We're normal to me. <laughs> right? I don't. I I go ooh to the muggles. I know. Um, I, I love to surround myself with people who are eclectic and individuals, and 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 that you know explore the edge. I think that that's beautiful and what life is all about. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, so, next, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we keep talking about wiccanseminary.edu and what we do with our classes and what we do with our students. And, and I don't want to leave out that it's wiccanseminary.edu. The next summer semester starts uh, July 5th. So oh, now's yeah. the perfect time to join the seminary because... July 5th is when everything starts back up and you can get a whole year in by yeah. the time you get started. And then you can start the sophomore year in January with the rest of the sophomores. So if you're interested in what we're talking about, I encourage you to go check it out. It's a lot of fun. You get to meet the future leaders of Wicca. You get to become a leader yourself. We open doors for you. Brenna Grace, the maiden of the Mother Church, is teaching Wicca 101. And we just have a blast in there. So if you need a community or if you like being solitaire, but you just want to learn more, you might want to check out wickenseminary.edu. It's a lot of fun. It's how Lola and I became good friends. Yes, we, I made connections with so many amazing people. And I highly suggest it because it really, it teaches you to empty your cup and fill it with new knowledge. That is going to be the most important thing I will tell people because they, you know, you go in thinking, you know, everything, just empty your cup, open your mind and you'll be amazed at what, what wonderful things happen. Yeah. Well, you know, cause it's, it's not really about getting rid of it all. It's about rearranging it a little bit. Yeah. 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 You're not getting rid of what you learn. Yeah. Yeah, you could put it in storage, you know, yeah. you could be like, hey, this is stuff I'll put here and I'll make room for more stuff. Yeah. 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 It's like your skinny clothes. You put your skinny clothes away and then when you lose weight again, you pull all that stuff out and decide that you don't actually like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Except for my mischief managed shirt. <laughs> that is what I did. I hung on to uh, some of my smaller clothes and, um, yeah. And then I lost 65 pounds and I'm able to fit into some of them, but there were some I found. I went, Oh, I wore this. I know. Right. Well, that's congratulations, Lola. I'm so <laughs> proud of you for losing weight. That's oh, really it's awesome. Good. It's been good. That's awesome. So next week we're going to talk about, um, let's see, what are we, course, cone of power, the cone of power. Yeah, oh then it's going to power. Oh, <laughs> and then we can do we can do energy raising exercises and raise energy. Oh yeah, that will be fun. I That'll love be fun. that. Yeah, yeah we'll have a good oh, time. Look at, 
Thank you. Our producer is a uh, is Adora put up Children of the Crossroads Seeker Path. We do a online every Wednesday um, in Discord at 630. We'll be talking about the same topic and uh, hope to see everyone there as well. I really appreciate Isadora and all the hard work that she does producing this in, this in the background. We are so grateful for her. Now, if you enjoy our program, they're all on YouTube under the live section and you could donate and help us continue to do work like this and more at paypal.me slash ATC Wicca. We appreciate your donation and it, it helps us in our ministry. Yay. Thank, well, thank you so you, much. You're, thank you're you. so much fun. I look forward to this. Oh my God, my heart loves you. I'm thinking about you and your family at this time. And thank you. Uh, I will see you same cat time, same cat channel. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>